what is going on you guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to continue learning about in-app purchases and more specifically we're going to look at how you can set up with xcode 12 uh, the ability to test your in-app purchases right in your simulator so um, this is a huge 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 advantage uh, now that this is available uh, prior it was quite annoying to test in-app purchases um, you can simulate things like refunds and purchases and basically you can even test different um, like localizations and the whole nine yards so we'll set up uh, this and take a look at what goes into it so that said make sure you destroy the like button as always get excited hit subscribe if you're a returning viewer get xcode ready and let's talk about some more in-app purchases quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template here and let's go ahead and call this testing IAPs. Once again, make sure all of these uh, values match for the language, lifecycle and interface. Go ahead and continue and cool we'll save it to the desktop and first things first let's go ahead and pick a simulator here and just hit that run button to get it loaded and let me also expand my xcode window here and get rid of my antivirus pop-up that likes to make an appearance in every video and let's get into some in-app purchases so i've got a previous video on how to request in-app purchases from uh the app store but Essentially what we'll do is we're gonna quickly stub out that code and we're more so gonna focus on how do you actually test them in a simulator since that's what's new here in Xcode 12. So of course, those of you that don't know how to fetch those products, feel free to follow along. But basically we're gonna have an array here of product types for our table view models. And we're gonna use a table view to list out our uh, products that we have fetched from the App Store. So this will be a basic UI table view. And we're just going to register a basic table view uh, cell with an ID of cell. And here we're going to add this as a sub view and set its delegate and data source. We're going to want to conform to these protocols for the table view. So UI table view delegates and UI table view data source. And we're also going to want to conform to SK product request delegates. And this is how we actually get the products back from the uh, request we're going to make. And let's go ahead and stub out the protocol functions. So number of rows, we're going to return models.count self row we're going to say let cell equals a table view dequeuing a cell with the id we registered which is simply cell for the given index path and then we want to return a cell and let's just go ahead and say the text is a test to make sure it is showing up uh, we're also going to want did select row at index path and this is how we're going to prompt the in-app purchase uh, in this case of course in the debug fashion so we're going to say show purchase just like that and we also want the product uh, setup so we're going to say products so the first one is product request did receive response and all we're going to say is that the models now equals the response.products. So basically whatever products we get back from the app store. And we'll take a look at how to set that up in a moment. And then we want to reload the table view 
just like that. And we also want to do this on the main thread. The reason being uh, we're doing a table view reload, which is a UI uh, operation. So we should do that on the main thread and add self here. And for those of you who I know are going to ask, the way you do this multi cursor thing is you hold option uh, and drag, and you can actually have multiple cursors if you want to write on two lines or delete on two lines at the same time. So cool little pro tip uh, for editing your code faster. Now let's see, we also want to give the table view a frame. We'll just say it's the entirety of the screen. And we want to fetch products. So I'm going to create a function for that and put it right down here. And we're gonna wanna have, let's say we have three products for the purposes of this video. Let's go ahead and put them in an enum and we'll see why in just a second. The enum will have a raw value of a string and the enum will be case iterable. And we're gonna have remove ads, unlock everything and unlock gems. Let's call this get gems. And we're gonna say, it has a ID of com dot my app dot gems. Let's go ahead and paste this up here and just change these up. Go ahead and hit command V. Your app should be compiling. If you go ahead and just hit command R, there should be no crashing going on. You should see an empty table view here uh, with the cell separators. Let's go ahead and create that product fetch request. So. The way we create it is by simply initializing a SK product request. And you initialize it with a set of uh, product IDs. And we can say product, rather as a set, product dot all cases. And we can say compact map the raw value. And that's why we created it as an enum. If we ever wanted to add more products, we could simply add to this enum. Next up, we want to set the delegate of the request where the response will be handled down here. And then we want to lastly start the request. And I'm also going to be printing out uh, the account of products we get for testing purposes, just like that. So if you actually go ahead and hit Command R, you'll notice something a little strange. Uh, and that strange thing is we don't see any print statement here, but we are requesting three products. Uh, and let's make sure we're calling fetch products, which we are. So the question becomes, uh, what gives, right? Uh, and the answer is, uh, before Xcode 12, there was no way to test in-app purchases in a simulator. And it was a major pain to actually go and, you know, run it on your device and do a bunch of setup. So let's talk about store kit configuration files. So we're gonna go to File, uh, New, and we wanna find a configuration file for store kit. You can go ahead and create it, and this box does not need to be checked. And that gives you something like this. And basically we can create three products local to our application, and these are not basically anything the user will see, but strictly for testing purposes, and use these to test. So here, once we hit the plus, we see there's three types of products that are supported. We're gonna do three non-consumable products. And the one thing we're gonna copy from here is the ID. So let's see, we've got remove ads, uh, everything and gems. And you can uh, use two fingers if you have a trackpad to swipe between the previous and uh, latter file. So firstly, we're gonna to go to each of these and paste in that bundle ID. We're going to give it a name. This is just a reference name. And you can also control the description and the display name that comes back in a bunch of different languages for testing. We're gonna stick with English and we're gonna say remove ads, removes all ads in the app. Let's go to the next one. And I believe this one was something like gems, gems. Let's go ahead and edit the English localization info. And this is really great. Um, for those of you that are new to Xcode, this is such a big time saver that I can't stress it uh, enough. It, so traditionally, 
you would have to set up a bunch of things in uh, App Store Connect and configure users to uh, test your products and go through a bunch of hoops basically uh, to get this even to be testable. So being able to do this right in Xcode and on the simulator is a major time saver. So now that we have all of these um, added here, if we go ahead and hit Command R, you'll still notice that the console actually doesn't print anything. And there's a good reason for this. Uh, the reason is we need to tell Xcode that we should use this configuration file when we're testing. And the way you do that is by editing the scheme. So you wanna select this dropdown and hit Edit Scheme. You wanna to come to the Run option here and the Options sub option here. And there's a row titled Store Kit Configuration. It will be None by default. But when the dropdown, you'll see it includes the new one we created. So if you go ahead and uh, just select that, and if we take a look at our app right now, we don't have any cells rendering. I think uh, in the view controller, we're just using uh, a text label text of uh, test, I believe. Yep. So let's go ahead and hit Command R. Not only should we see the print statement here, we should see three cells here. So we got three products back uh, from the request. Uh, I'm actually logging the, it looks like the products itself. What I wanted to do was log the count, but let's actually configure the cell with the info from our product. So the product at the given position is in the models, the index path dot row. And we can say the text is the product dot uh, localized dis title. I guess they call it title instead of display name. And we can then say, uh, there's a colon here. And next we want pr product dot localized description. And then finally, we of course want to show the user a price. So we're going to say product. And there's actually two price things on here you should be aware of. The first thing is the price itself. And the other thing is the price locale. And that's uh, things like, um, that basically correlates to which country the user is coming from. So the price locale can be used to derive a currency symbol. So I believe on the locale, you can get the currency symbol directly, just like that. So let's actually go ahead and hit Command R and let's see what this looks like. So cool, so one issue is our table view cell is uh, wrapping the text label. Let's go ahead and say number of lines is zero. And it looks like this is optional. So let's go ahead and give it a default value of a dollar sign. And if we run this again, now we get more interesting. So we see not only our display title, we see that I spelled removes wrong, but we see the description as well as a price. And uh, for those of you uh, who missed it, I didn't really call it out. You can specify a dummy price here as well. Uh, but when you click on the cell, nothing happens right now. So let's go ahead and hook that up. So the way you actually prompt a purchase is by just requesting a payment. So we're gonna say let payment is a SK payment with a product. And we're simply going to pull the product out of our models. And then we want to add it to the transaction queue. So we're gonna say default and we want to add a payment. And of course, to observe different payments and transactions, we want to add a observer. So we'll do that in view did load. And we want to add a SK payment transaction observer. And of course we want to conform to that protocol so it doesn't yell at us. So SK payment transaction observer, this one right here. And I believe there's one required function to it and that is uh, updated transactions. And I'm not gonna implement this uh, since it's not really relevant to this video, but let's go ahead and run. And now you'll see when we click on one of these, if you look at that, we get our uh, sheet down here. And if you had an app icon, it would show like right here. Um, and uh, before I hit this, actually, let's actually quickly implement this, even though I said I wasn't going to, to just 
portray something else I want to show you guys. Uh, so we're going to do a for each over transactions and we're going to switch on the transaction uh, type. Let's see, we want to do transactions for each and we want to switch on dollar zero dot state actually transaction state it was is what it's called. And I'm going to wait for the error and just hit this and hit fix and it'll stub out all the cases for us. And let's just add some um, print statements here. Just so you guys can see what uh, what happens we go ahead and interact with um, that bottom in our purchase sheet. So go ahead and hit Command R. And first we see that we successfully fetched three products and I'm gonna go ahead and try to unlock everything. And you see that we are now purchasing. So this function was in fact called. And if I select this, we get, you know, the nice in-app purchase noise and we get it dismissing. And generally I believe it should come into a uh, purchased Looks like it didn't for whatever reason. And I believe that reason actually is we need to say SK payment Q default. And we want to finish the transaction in this case. So let's go ahead and try that once more. But point being that you can uh, test everything related to uh, you know, your product. Uh, you see actually now it came and said purchased, but let's try that again. So we're going to do this, purchasing, purchased, and let's see, we have this alert. If we hit that, we actually see purchase gets called after the user dismisses that alert. So yeah, and the very last thing that I'll cover, uh, since this video is getting longer than I thought, is I believe what you also can do is go to debug, uh, store kit, manage transactions and if you open this up you'll actually see our two transactions in here for this app uh, are listed here so if you wanted to simulate things like a refund of a purchase you can do that and you can also delete both of these again because um, you know in a proper app you should be saving what's been purchased and whatnot uh, and if you delete these and run your app again you'll notice that we can purchase these again and there's no print statements here so you can go through the motions of testing, you know, a bunch of scenarios right in Xcode with this approach. So that all said, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Once again, to recap really fast, all we did is set up a store kit, a table view. And the important thing was we created this configuration.storekit file and set it up in our scheme here to uh, allow us to test on the simulator. So that all said, hit subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Really appreciate it. Leave a comment with any questions. I'll catch you guys in the next video.